So before I start the video, just in case any of you are confused, yes, I know I've already uploaded a video pretty much exactly like this one before, but like I explained in my video two times ago on the Warlord video, for the next few Wednesdays, I will be redoing all the videos that I had to take down due to YouTube's bullshit copyright policies. So well, yeah, with that being said, let's get into this. So when we're talking about King's Hockey, it's hard really to know where to start because not just is it very confusing what it does and how it actually works, but a huge issue I see a lot of the time is that it doesn't really seem very useful. As far as we've seen in the story, it only works on people who could be completely one-shotted by every single member on the Straw Hats crew. So what good does that do them exactly? Yes, I understand that Luffy was able to take out 50% of the 100,000 fishmen on Fishman Island, but none of them would have mattered anyway. If Zoro would have just slashed one time, he could have taken them all out in one shot. The reason this was always so frustrating to me is because Conqueror's Hockey has always been built up and talked about as if it is the strongest of the three hockeys. And on top of that, it is really cool when it actually is put into use and people pass out, but if it doesn't work on anyone that actually matters, then that's not that cool. But luckily for me, and I shouldn't even be surprised about this because he is the ultimate character of all time, my boy Dofi seems to have given me some kind of evidence that it is not the case that it just doesn't work on people too strong for it. You see, when you look closely at the fight between Luffy and Dofi, something very interesting happens at the start of their battle. And when I say the start of their battle, I'm not referring to when they get on the rooftop, uh, no, I mean like, uh, 50 chapters later when Luffy starts fighting Dofi. When they start the super cool kicking each other's feet show, something interesting happens after they exert their conqueror's hockey for some time. Luffy starts attacking Dofi with just normal combat, you know, like punching, kicking, and Dofi puts up almost no fight at all against him. For a countless number of attacks from Luffy, Dofi is just blocking, not trying to dodge at all, just taking hit after hit. I don't even know if he was using hockey to stop them or reduce the damage. He displays absolutely zero offensive capacity and just keeps blocking after blocking until eventually he doesn't even do that. He just starts getting hit directly in the face, time after time, and it's like, whatever, I mean, I guess this is happening. This is the same guy that completely whooped Law's ass and was beating Luffy pretty decently until he whipped out Gear 4th, and then even then, you know, it was a very tight battle. But for some reason, Luffy can just be throwing regular punches, regular kicks, and Dofi can't even block them anymore? Like, what's going on here? So the theory I have come up with, and it's actually pretty rare that I do, but I really strongly believe in this theory. It is that Conqueror's Hockey does not necessarily either make someone pass out or just have no effect on them, but to some degree, depending on factors that I'm not aware of, just you know, some kind of strength as it seems, people get fatigued when exposed to another person's Conqueror's Hockey. So in the case of when it is used on super weak people by someone like Shanks, they pass out because they are not prepared for it, they can't handle it, and they are so fatigued that they just immediately pass out. And in the case here with Dofi and Luffy, Dofi is a very strong opponent, but it is believed that Luffy has a very powerful Conqueror's Hockey. It is even mentioned that Luffy is supposed to specialize in Conqueror's Hockey while Sanji is in Observation and Zoro is an Armnet Hockey. So when Dofi takes it head on at point blank range, by the way, he gets a little exhausted for some period of time. He just takes hit after hit and is maybe even getting more exhausted from taking more hits and that's why he eventually can't even block. And it is only when he has a flashback to his past and has a small mental breakdown on screen that he is able to go back to full power and really just bring it back at Luffy. From my perspective, it was as if he was just super fatigued, couldn't really do anything after being exposed to so much Conqueror's Hockey at such a close range, and then he just had this massive adrenaline rush. And now another thing you might think too is, oh, well, you know, Dofi was using Conqueror's Hockey too, so why was Luffy not affected by this? But you see, that's exactly the thing. Luffy was not really using any powerful abilities or anything. He was just throwing regular punches and kicks, like I said earlier. In this fight, up until then, Luffy had on multiple occasions used Red Hawk. Pretty much just a shit ton. Gatling gun? Like, it was just powerful move after powerful move, and then they just have this Conqueror's Hockey Clash and he can't do anything? 
at the same time that Dofi can actually do zero things? It just, it doesn't really add up to me, and we really needed an explanation for how Conqueror's Hockey works and why it would be ever useful in any real fight, and I think that this is the answer. I truly believe that this is an amazing explanation for what could be going on with Conqueror's Hockey, and I could see how it could be used in the future very well to deal with problems like the fact that Kaido is, what, like, the size of a skyscraper? There is no way that someone like Luffy is going to just be able to beat someone like Kaido, even with help by just using simple physical attacks. He needs some kind of intangible advantage, some kind of way to fatigue Kaido besides just, you know, like sparring with him. If Kaido doesn't have Conqueror's Hockey and he takes it head on from Luffy, uh, that might be a serious problem for him if Luffy's still coming in hot with maybe King Kong gun and he has no hockey to defend himself. It would be like in Hunter x Hunter when Kurapika kills Uvogin by using his chains to force Uvogin to use Zetsu, which allows him to not use any kind of Nen, making his defenses completely vulnerable. I personally would really like to see this being the case. I think that it would not be any kind of cop-out at all. I think it would make perfect sense, especially because we've seen it happen in the story. There's really no hole in it. it every time we've seen it happen, it adds up. And like I just said, I think it would be an excellent plot device. It would make a perfect way for Luffy to be able to take on opponents way more physically powerful than himself. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my redone version of it. I know that the old one might have been a little bit cooler because it was like animated compared to this one where it's just my normal style. But it was also about three times as long, so... I know people have been complaining lately that my videos aren't that long. But if you did enjoy this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. As usual, please leave me comments knowing what you think, things that I can improve, things that are already good, and just really most importantly, ideas for the future, videos you want me to make, and just maybe topics to talk about. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.